This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, here's Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. What's up, Education Weekers? BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, August 16th. Good luck finding parking on campus today. That's why I got here last night. (laughs) You literally got here at like 8 a.m., dude. I, no, no, no. I was here at like 7.50, and, I'm, and the parking lot was wide open. And I'm like, I have vastly overestimated it was um, like I need cream. to get here this early. It was uh, with arms wide open. <laughs> yeah, uh, alongside a guy who's never missed the ninth rep, Jason Shepard, who showed up early. No, 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 no. In fact, ninth, ninth if you're stopping. Are you, how many reps do you If go you're you go? stopping Eight, at seven, the ninth ten? rep, then you're you're stopping you one short. You fail. You have, right. it's, it's always ten reps. But the reason we bring this up because we have coaches on bikes again. Yes. It's the principle in doing the little things. You got to do the little things. You know what I mean? Like, the, doing the little things right is how you become successful. Like, if you're supposed to line up at nine yards, don't line up at eight and a half. Preach now. You know, if you're supposed to do nine reps, don't do eight. Okay, okay. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you say you're going to be somewhere, be there on time. Respect the man's time. Oh, man. Man, Coach G. That was church right there. That's, I hear that. Hey, that's straight church, bro. Gospel. Hey, Tuesday church. Let's go. <laughs> Coaches on bikes. That's from this morning. That's so, right. Yes. They live in what? Vineyard? They live they, in the they live like where, by, by, uh, in the yard. We're in the same area. Here's what I here's what I was hoping was gonna happen this morning. I was hoping that because I went so early that I was actually gonna be able to drive by them as they were recording and that. And be in the back of the was on the show that then you Then I was on? gonna, yes, it was sort of, it was gonna be sort of like an inception type situation. Yes, you're planting ideas. But they, they, they beat me, but yes, we all live in the same area. And so like where they film that, I drive by that every day to go to work. Shout out to Vineyard because the, the uh, Megaplex Theater, that's where I go, man. The top I'm, golf. I'm going they, to eat top golf. They stuff put now. the net up around you can't the other miss day. It from the freeway, bro. I'm just saying it's up now. Yeah, I'm going to ET this afternoon in IMAX. Oh, I can't wait. Why didn't you invite me? Do you want to go? Three thirty. Three thirty? Yeah. Just skipping out early afternoon. Let's go. Did, did you give what me do a you ticket? have? Did you get me a ticket? Yeah. Just no, go to the app and buy one, and I'll. Okay, it's fine. Then you didn't back. even think about me. Here's the show. I did think about you, but it was just for a second. If all four preseason ranked teams on BYU's football schedule finish ranked, can BYU get a split or better? We'll discuss what we think and what we hope and what history tells us. Puka Nakua on a potential 1,000-yard season, his emotional discussion about his departed dad's plan for he and his brothers. David Nixon is in studio as well. It's an AFR Tuesday on being ranked top 25. And who are BYU's top five defensive players? Top five Tuesday, t- Tuesday tells all. But first, today's headlines. BYU football fall camp continues today. Practice number 10. There will be media availability today following practice. So make sure you follow BYU Sports Nation Twitter today. That is at BYU Sports Nation starting at around 2.30 Eastern time. Zach Wilson will have surgery to repair his torn meniscus this morning in L.A. Best of luck to the surgeon. Also, the first round of NFL cuts are happening. Tomasi Laulile was let go by the Niners. The preseason polls continue. It's women's volleyball's turn. They come in ranked number 10 Mm. in the preseason ABCA coaches poll. And that brings us to a very early stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. This is pretty remarkable. This is the first time since 1997 that BYU has had three teams in preseason top 25s to start the fall. Women's soccer, as we know, preseason number three. Women's volleyball, as we just mentioned, preseason number 10. And yesterday we found out BYU football preseason number 25. First time since 1997. Harrison Collier coming up with that stat. That is incredible. Emmy nominated Harrison Collier. Yes, regional Emmy. What are you? What, there's what, are, a, what are you downgrading? I'm part of that broadcast. What are you downgrading? Because there's a difference. There's a difference between the national Emmy and the regional. It's still an Emmy. That's like all conference versus all American. It's great. But let's. I'm not trying to downgrade. Harrison. Harrison. I just stated a fact, and you got mad. <laughs> Headline four. Day two of the U.S. Amateur for four Cougar golfers. David Timmons, one under through 13. It's just an amateur, though. Uh, two oh, my gosh. Off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> two strokes off the lead. 
Simmons leads uh, all four among the all four uh, golfers in BYU. Carson Lundell, two over through 15, tied for 43rd. Elijah Turner, 13 over through 17, brought Goyan yet to begin his second round. Three over, teeing off at 12.57 Eastern. Best luck to those guys on day two. BYU Athletics will hold a press conference later today to announce a partnership with Web3 developer Okavu. The partnership will launch what is being called the world's largest fan engagement platform on the CougsRise.com website that allows fans to support athletes through NFT experiences. Purchases will directly benefit BYU athletics and, or excuse me, BYU athletes and the BYU athletics department. Cutting edge stuff. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. Okay, BYU has four, count them, four opponents in the preseason AP Top 25 poll. History tells us four aren't likely to finish ranked per se, but there's a chance those four teams. So, Shep, if all four finish ranked, What's BYU's record against those four? All right, so I'll, I'll give you the quick answer, and then we can kind of get it. And I'm, I'm with you. I, I would say it's probably unlikely that at the end of the season, all four of these teams that are currently preseason top 25 yeah. end that way. That's happened, I believe, five times in BYU history. They've played four plus. Correct. In the um, I, I think right now you go in with the fact you, you've got to get two. So you got to be at least two and two for at for least. for goals to be that you have set for yourself down the road yeah, yeah. to to play out. So I I think you go in and minimum two and two. I think if things go well, I think you could I think you can be three and one with this schedule, especially knowing how good this team should be. So What's I. What's the most likely loss to you? The most likely loss to me is probably Notre Dame. Agreed. Uh, th that's the one that I look at. Look, and here's here's the way I look at it. Baylor ranked preseason number 10. BYU is actually favored in that game. And, I, and I've said from day one, I do expect BYU to because win that Provo. game. It's in Provo. I have, I have confidence that BYU can win that game. So I'm going in assuming BYU beats Baylor this year. That's the one you've got to get the most. Well, so, look, the healthiest, it's at home. Well, the, the, two, the two I think you've got to get are the two at home. And that's Arkansas and that's, and that's Baylor. Those are the two. And right now we don't really know... We don't have a line on the Arkansas game yet, but Arkansas is the team that is at least preseason top 25 ranked the closest to BYU because they come in at number 19. Here's the thing with Oregon, and, and I've said this since we, we got the early lines when the schedule was released. If you're, a, if you're within a touchdown dog at Autzen Stadium against Oregon, I will take that. I'm, I'm look. I'm not buying Oregon at number 11. I, I don't know I'm, why they were given the benefit of the doubt I'm not and BYU be, was not. They should be like 19. I agreed. Yeah. I, I think this, this is 7 to 10 spots higher than they should be ranked. So That's the power of Nike. Uh, well, look, it, and, and it very well could be. Yeah. But I, I think that could be your third win because I, I just – New coaching staff, a lot. Look, you've got to wonder what their confidence level is after last season, which was an absolute disaster, minus the win at, at Ohio State. That was right, and that was early, and that was very um, early. You know, Bo, Bo Nix is the, uh, has shown flashes of brilliance, but not been super consistent. Auburn's former quarterback, Dan Lanning, the DC, and you Georgia, have to assume they lose year. right out of the gate against they Georgia. They will lose to Georgia, and <laughs> so in Atlanta, you expect like, them to be one and one when BYU well, travels to Oregon. Well, what we want is for Oregon to pull in Ohio State and beat Georgia, because then they they fly up to five or six suddenly, and uh, maybe even higher. And now BYU walks into Autzen in week three with, like, a top five opponent. Um, and if you can pull a Utah and beat them, uh, then you're good, right? Utah beat two ranked teams last year, by the way, both Oregon. No one else in the Pac-12 offered that and nothing in non-conference. Sometimes uh, you take what you can get. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, hey, go Ducks. Go Ducks. Go beat Georgia somehow, who lost, like, 80,000 NFL draft picks, <laughs> uh, which was crazy. Okay, yeah. I'm with you. I, I think two and two is the is the goal. Well, for us, realistically, right? The team is trying to go four and zero. Duh. But like two and two would be really good in those because you're getting two quality wins. Think about it. If you took like the two worst of those four, we'd still be crazy happy, right? Because yeah. they're not bad at all. But like you mentioned, a couple lines on these um, that we've had from the summer or recently. Notre Dame, BYU's six and a half point dog. Uh, Baylor, one and a half point favorite. 
Oregon, six and a half point dog. Oregon and Notre Dame, same line. That feels a little weird. That seems right? a little strange. To and me. then we don't have a line yet for Arkansas. Arkansas is the team that's most likely to not be ranked at the end of the year. Let me tell you why. Tell me why they're playing too many amazing teams, okay? They're playing Cincinnati. They're playing AM. They're playing Bama. They're playing BYU. They're playing Ole Miss. Like, they're going to lose at least three of those, if not a couple other games. Well, and they're also the furthest down in the poll where one loss could Gets drop you out. Bit. And that game's going to come later. It's also, um, you know, scrunched in. But like, the, the BYU game is, is in the middle is of in a the heart of their brutal SEC. schedule yes. for Arkansas. In fact, just looking it up real quick. So it's Alabama. They play <laughs> week four. Texas a and at home. Okay. Sorry. Uh, no, in Arlington. Neutral. Uh, Alabama. Yeah, that's not going to be neutral. <laughs> well, that's the Jerry Jones game. He went to yeah. Arkansas. So they yes. Host it. Uh, <laughs> then Alabama at home, at Mississippi State, at BYU, off at Auburn. So, like, Arkansas is going to be toast. They're not going to finish ranked. Notre Dame's going to finish ranked. You'd think Oregon could finish ranked. Baylor feels pretty volatile here. And this was uh, mentioned by Bill Connolly as well as one of the most likely teams to perhaps finish unranked. Yes, uh, they're building and getting better under Dave Aranda. Obviously, Jeff Grimes there as the OC and Eric Mateos, former BYU coaches. But they could be pretty volatile. Like, this is still a league with Oklahoma. This is still a league with <laughs> aspiring Texas. But you have not ranked in the top 25. Right? You still have Oklahoma State. Like, Baylor winning the Big 12 feels like it was this great moment. I'm not sure it's the start of something. Maybe it was. But that feels like a game BYU should get early, just like you got Utah. Just. Week two, uh, let's go, get, get that Baylor win, and then walk into Otson with some real confidence, top hopefully 15, 20 matchup, and let's go from there. Notably, in the AP Top 25 poll, BYU is tied for second nationally with four preseason Top 25 opponents on the schedule. This is, this is a, it looks like a very tough schedule to start. But here's the wonderful thing. It's not going to play out like what we think. It, it, it just won't. These teams are never it exactly just, what you think by the end of the season. It just won't. So, okay, we have the hope. The hope is BYU, Shep, can, can continue on this on-ramp to a Power 5 team and schedule and somehow pull off, the, the for the first time in program history, three wins against teams that finish ranked. Now, we don't know who's going to finish ranked and how many. You can't control that part. But when you have a special season, you need some of the teams to stink on it. 1984 really benefited from this idea. Pitt was ranked third. They end up 3-7-1. and one. Michigan was ranked third earlier in the year. Jim Harbaugh breaks his arm. 6-6 six and six team that BYU beats. Both those were one-score games that BYU won with its undefeated greatest team ever. You need the schedule to shake out in a favorable way, a.k.a. we need, like, two of those teams to not be as good as they are right now. Then BYU's got a shot at 10-plus. If these teams all finish in that exact spot, BYU's probably not going to win 10-plus. But the variable here, Shep, is BYU. We've talked about everything but the Cougars. Right. We, we in our completely biased uh, blue goggle defense, Unapologetically. Unapologetic as well. <laughs> believe that BYU is better than 25th, that BYU can and will compete with these teams and win several of these games this year. That's the variable that's really exciting in this conversation. Well, there's, there's no question. That's why I, you can go in... No, well, you can't say you know because there's no way of knowing. But you go in like BYU's going to win two of these games. They're going to win two. We feel like they will. They're going to win two. Know. And then, and then like there's a will. chance yeah. for three. And look, last year, how many times did we talk about, okay, all, not just the, the P5s, but even just the Pac-12 games? Teams against teams from the or we games said against go teams from the four and three, and they went six and one, and they go six and one. And that's seven power. And so you just never know. We're looking at four and zero, oh, thinking that's probably not realistic. But what if it is? But what? What if? if what if it is? Then you need some of those teams to stink. That's it, my argument historically. It's true, you know? but, but here I look, or and I worse than I history. get that you when you go back in history and you can look and say, okay, well this team isn't what BYU can't worry about that. All they can worry about is playing it to the best of their ability and getting the win and moving on. Yeah. That's all at the end of the day that's going to matter for BYU is taking care of their business. And I love what they have at their disposal. And I love the opportunities they have with this schedule. Yes, reemphasizing that idea. Very talented BYU team this year we're very excited about. It. If the Pac-12 is actually good last year, BYU doesn't go 5-0 against it. 
Just a reminder there, right? Pac-12 stunk. BYU took advantage. 5-0. and Awesome. You need both of those things. And does anybody care that some of those teams weren't great? No. The AP preseason top 25 voters did. <laughs> well... <laughs> Otherwise, BYU 20, be 17. 25 of them apparently did. 25. That's, didn't well, there's more on that in later in the show. 25. They're all from Florida and voted in the year 2000. <laughs> this season begins in how many days, Shep? Countdown to the Bulls. 18 days. 18. Like, I'm like a Gunner Romney two and a half weeks of days. A Gunner Romney's worth of days. I like it. Our question of the day, what will BYU's record be against the four preseason ranked teams? That's Notre Dame, Baylor, Oregon, shout out to the 503 homies, and Arkansas. Pick They're really Zoe. your homies. They are my homies. I got a lot of homies. What's up, Bean Mace? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. <laughs> this is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At House of BYU, excited for at uh, House of Dragons. <laughs> Three and one. Dubs against Baylor and Oregon as BYU is catching both teams in favorable positions. One and one against Notre Dame and Arkansas with injuries likely playing a bigger role later this season. That is a great point. I, I am, I am uh, confident BYU can beat Arkansas at home, but I'm not excited about where it sits in the schedule right after Notre Dame and you know Utah State, Notre Dame, Arkansas. At that point, is BYU healthy? Is BYU emotionally spent from a huge game in Vegas against Notre Dame on MDC? There, that's a little tricky nuance there with Arkansas. Yeah, look, injuries are always going to play a role. It's nothing you can count on. History says that over the last couple of years, it's BYU just, football is violent. Well, he, well, for for BYU specifically, BYU during the era of independence has had a very hard time coming out of the first month of the season healthy. It's it's just unfortunately the way that it has played out. Hopefully that trend begins to change. Yeah. And, and BYU can have its playmakers as the season goes on and throughout the entire year. BYU lost Keenan Ellis. The Ke they lost the Keenans early last Correct. year. Uh, Keenan Ellis in game one against Arizona. Keenan Peely against uh, Arizona State, was it, in game three? Yes. Um, yeah, that was, that was tough. So, uh, but fortunately, BYU kept Jaron Hall and Tyler Algier and that offensive line for the most part and the receivers. So, yeah, got... Got Puka Nakua and Samson Nakua healthy uh, with hamstrings out of fall camp. So, so far, so good. Stay, stay healthy. Let's go. Okay, continue to weigh in on uh, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, coming up, the egregious part of yesterday's AP poll, and that is our word of the day. That will come up again. As if we haven't hit it enough already. Let's go there some more. And my one-on-one -on -one with wide receiver Puka Nakua, this is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant. And my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. When we were children, we used to call it the Secret Garden. We used to have all sorts of adventures there. Why can I see the Secret Garden? She can't find the door. Didn't you leave her the key? Yes. But don't you see? It's not working. It can't open the door. This 
something very strange about this garden. They say if you have the key and can open the door, then you know the garden's secrets. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow from 6 until 8.30 local time at Cougar Kickoff on the outdoor practice fields to meet and greet BYU athletes. We will have a booth as well where you can meet BYU TV analysts and hosts. They will sign autographs for free. Jerem, charging you $5. I have an NIL deal. So uh, what's funny is people are like, dude, NIL, do you guys taking advantage of that? It's like no one's wondered that since 09. <laughs> graduated so yeah live in studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play. Jerem joined alongside Jason Shepard Puka Nakua is primed to have a big year he's finally healthy ready for perhaps what we think could be a thousand yard year here's my conversation recently with the junior wide receiver all right Puka how's fall camp going man pretty good staying busy staying healthy it's fun to get out here finally got some pads on you go get a little contact show everybody how big you are how the, how the summer workouts were going and stuff but it's been good it's been fun to watch the physicality before you even had all the pads on. You guys are like itching to hit, it looked like. Is Literally, that right? Yeah, it's like the, the first days of fall camp, everybody's like, oh, you're so excited. There's so much energy. Everybody can't wait to get out there. The freshmen finally get to be a part of the team and start playing football. So it's like the best and like the worst feeling. All built up anger, tension, like emotions, the eagerness to play. It all comes out at once. And uh, 125 dudes just waiting to run into each other sounds like a disaster, honestly. <laughs> It is sometimes, right? It's crazy. Um, talk to me about this fall camp, coming in healthy for the first time in your college career and kind of what difference that's made. Uh, it's been so fun to like be active, a part of the stuff, and like to come into meetings and like not be stuck like in, in the training room doing rehab and stuff like that, to be a part of all the events, getting all the reps in, um, and just to be fully engaged um, in the game of football and then be fully engaged with my teammates. There's a tendency when you have injuries and stuff is like I want to isolate myself. It's me going through this. It's not uh, none of my teammates are going through this, but uh, it's been nice to be a part of that and then just to kind of see some of the teammates who might have been going through injuries or something that I've been similar and then be able to reach out to them and be like, hey, everybody's kind of had that injury phase or something that is kind of holding you back, but it's, it's time for football. We got We got four weeks of football and you got to enjoy it while it's here. Last year it was on the DL that you had a hamstring. You didn't play in the Arizona game. How quickly did it take you to get fully healthy in the season? Um, <laughs> kind of hard. I mean, you, 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 when season starts, it's kind of hard to say what healthy is. You know, you take, you take your nicks and bruises during the season. But uh, I wouldn't say it was much longer after that. It was nice. So we, we got our staff, uh, was able to help me get right. And then once season starts, that's kind of another energy sometimes that gets you out of bed, and whether, you're, whether you're healthy or not. <laughs> This year at BYU, having a second season, what kind of difference do you feel in terms of uh, comfortability with the quarterbacks, with the line, with the playbook, and so on? Um, like, ultimate comfortness. They probably feel uncomfortable sometimes how uncomfortable I feel in the locker room. We, uh, these are my brothers. Like, I lost Samson, so these guys, are they, they, are, they are taking place. 125 guys are taking the place of Samson for me. So my It takes that minute. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. It probably would take more. <laughs> but uh, just a level of comfort that uh, we get to spend time outside of football, in the locker room, playing video games against each other. We play UFC. We play PGA. Like, I don't know if people play PGA on the Xbox, but we do that over here. But the ping pong games we play, the shuffleboard like those are the those are the things that help us uh that builds the trust that i have in those guys when we're out there in the football field and i hope that's like the team camaraderie that we get to do and the stuff that we have uh it, it helps out there on the football field more than the guys think for sure you led byu in yards last year with 805 despite not playing the arizona game and being a little hampered at the beginning is a thousand yards a fair goal for you is that a thing you've written down and thought about um, definitely. I haven't put any numbers out there. Um, I'll do it for you. A thousand yards. <laughs> a thousand yards. Uh, that, uh, whatever is, whatever is asking me, I'm excited. I, I have big goals and aspirations uh, for this season. And I felt like, uh, last year was just, uh, uh, a, a, a preview of what I feel like I have in store. And I've been working on my game, trying to improve in the places that I feel like I wasn't there. At, and then obviously to prepare myself for what the future goal is. So, uh, and that's to beat USF. <laughs> so I'm excited. So I'm ready for that one. I'll be ready. That, that was kind of uh, that was my first game. I broke 100 yards. So hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we'll see if we can break 200 this time. Hey, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Hey, if 805 was a preview, I really like that trailer. I'm excited for the movie. Um, being an Orem kid, going to Washington, coming back. 
being now a fourth-year junior right at BYU where you guys are expected to be pretty good this year. What's this experience like for you as a local kid playing for the Wino? Um, I think this year it's hit me more kind of than ever, even though there was the – the love that me and Samson felt last year of coming back home and the season that we had last year was uh, one that will lives in my head daily, all the memories I have with Samson and then being on, those guys, uh, on the field with him last year. But this year, it's like, it's the perfect storybook ending. We're in, we're in far, far away, and it's happy ever after now. Like, uh, everything's coming together. The picture fits right. All the pieces are coming together, and you can just, if everything going forward feels so good, it's like I, I'm not asking for anything to be perfect. It's already perfectly planned in front of me. So uh, I'm, I just, I'm so excited. <laughs> you and Samson always have a smile on your face. You've talked about this with me before of like, hey, li life's meant to be happy. I want to go back to your, your deep blue from last year. Super emotional about your dad and what he meant to you. And you talked about the greater plan that he had to have you and Samson, obviously Kai here at, at BYU and your other brother. Um, what's it like to know, hey, dad had this plan and here we are living this out? Um, it's, it's surreal sometimes. And uh, the blessing that um, it's been to, to be here in this moment now and to kind of see the, the plan that he had, um, it feels good, at, um, but there's always that kind of the thought of I, I wish he obviously he was here to see the the plan that he had envisioned so long ago kind of come together. And it's it's odd how the things that he would have mentioned uh, I've seen happen in front of my eyes and in my life, and I've been the the benefits of uh, the things that he had planned out there. But and then just a blessing to be uh, with my family, like the journey that we've been through. My mom, um, she she's not, she's done it all uh she wasn't she wasn't she didn't know what to do but she got us here and uh it's all been part of a surreal plan but extremely extremely blessed to be where i am but uh dad you you, you planned it right for sure puka nakua talking to his uh dad there at the end an emotional moment uh, for puka and if you haven't seen his deep blue you need to check it out his uh his uh, dad uh, died a couple years ago and was certainly influential in his life and had this plan, like you talked about, where the boys would play at BYU. And Samson went to Utah and Puka went to Washington. Well, they came back last year and they were part of a special season. And they're a big reason BYU beats Utah. Oh, there's no question about that, it. That, that, was, that was a big deal. And uh, so pretty special for those guys to be here. Now Puka is a junior, fourth-year junior. If he has a good to great year, he's probably going to the NFL next year. 18.7 yards a catch, touchdown every seven grabs, had 100, uh, 805 yards last year with a uh, tight hamstring at the beginning of the year. 1,000 yards isn't out of the question. What do you think? Uh, well, no, I'm expecting 1,000 yards without expecting, question. Expecting? I love it. Yeah, we, this is, look, the guy had, the guy had 805 last year, and, and now he's going to be even more of a focal point of the offense. So I, I, I don't think 1,000 yards for Puka is, is crazy by any stretch. And look, here's the other thing that it really excites me about not just Puka himself, but players like Puka. Yes. These are the guys now that BYU has the opportunity to get. And yes, there was the family aspect and the fact that he's from the area. So that all plays into him coming here. But now that BYU is about to enter a, a new chapter in athletics in terms of going to the Big 12. These are the types of receivers that we should start to see more and more of coming into the program. We've started to see that over the last couple of years. And, and look, and, I, and I've said this before, I think Austin Colley right now is the standard for greatest receiver at BYU. I think Puka has a yes. chance. And I agree with you. I think, he, I think this is it. I think this is his year. We expect him to have a great year, and I think he goes to the NFL. Hey, I'd love him next year, and, too. And, and look, I would love to have him yeah. more, but I, I think there's a chance he could leave BYU as the greatest receiver BYU's ever had. I what, think he has that he, type of talent. What would he have to do to earn that uh, conversation? Like from that's number, quite the thing. Well, I, from a number standpoint, I'm not sure because I, I don't he, – he may not be here long enough to be able to put up the numbers that Kali has. Does he have to have a better NFL career than Austin? No, because I'm not, I don't I don't How does he I don't Austin? view I don't view it that way in terms of what their pro career was based off of what they did here. Mm. Look, when we look back at Austin, I, I'm not I'm, we know his career was cut short in the NFL because of concussions. Yeah, and I, at BYU he left after his junior year. Yeah, he could have added numbers that Cody yes, didn't get. I, I Cody passed. When I say that he's the greatest, I'm not even thinking of anything he did in the NFL. That is 100 percent 
what he did here at BYU, and certainly his role in a couple of very big games. I think we all know the games we're talking about. More one-handed catches and stiff arms on Utah State, guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, what you need. 77 yards a game, by the way, over 13 games, including bowl game, is 1,000. So it's not crazy. It's not by crazy. By the way, underrated rusher for Puka, 10.6 yards a carry. 14, essentially, uh, you know, reverses or jet sweep. Yeah. So let's go. All right, coming up, David Nixon will join the program. We'll get his thoughts on BYU's preseason rankings. And who has the tougher schedule, football or women's volleyball? Wait to hear who they are playing this fall. How many top ten opponents do they have in there? This is BYU Sports Nation. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, including fall camp coverage today at 12.30 Mountain Time. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He's Jason. I'm Jerem. Let's whip it. Good Whip Round is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. All right, in the AP poll breakdown, what is more egregious, our word of the day? The fact that BYU's high in the, in the voter uh, rankings that were published, uh, that uh, two people had BYU as high as 13. Okay. Or that 25 voters did not have BYU in their poll. I wonder what I'm going to say. <laughs> The 25, clearly. Um, I feel BYU should have been something like 17. If you I you and I are on the same page in with our, this. In my yes. bias, been 17. Um, so only four spots off the high of 13. Yes. Yeah. 25 and didn't have them in? 20, look, and these are supposed to be the people that are paying attention to this stuff. Look, and I had so many people yesterday tweet me after I said I believe that BYU deserved to be a top 20 team. And they're like, every single person's response to that was, hey, but this is the team that lost to UA. I don't care. 10 and 2. And they br bring back almost everybody from that team. You tossed the team that lost to San Diego State. I, I just, Why I, are they, seven they, they deserve everybody to be top loses. 20, and regardless of the loss in the bowl game, Good I don't team. care about that loss Good in the bowl game. lose to okay or bad teams. Yes. So it it's ridiculous. The you 25 people that pay attention Boise to this. State. Yes, don't care. In the AP preseason poll, the new Big 12 would have six ranked teams tied for most with the SEC. Do you have Big 12 pride already about this? Already? I've had it for like a year. Oh, look at your shirt. Yeah, I'm like, where are <laughs> Of course I do. This was not even planned. Here's the thing. You slept in that, which I thought was weird to also wear on the show. <laughs> but uh, how close are we to the uh, Big 12 again? Countdown to the Big 12. 319. Okay, that yeah, was... That, that one's weird. But yeah, 319 days until July 1st. 
Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who has the tougher schedule, BYU football or BYU women's volleyball? It's women's volleyball. It's, let me tell you why. Uh, sixth ranked Pitt coming to Provo, playing neutral with seventh ranked Ohio State, at ninth ranked Georgia Tech, at 22nd ranked Utah, a pair with San Diego in league. Oh, by the way, Washington State, first team out coming to Provo in the first week of the season. That's a tough schedule. Okay, it is a tough schedule, but I'm going to say BYU football because none of the opposing players on the women's volleyball schedule is going to tackle them. But they are going to spike a ball into their face. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go. They're going to Scott Sterling every single I will one take of them. the opposite and just say BYU football. Okay. <laughs> Okay, football, women's volleyball, and soccer all ranked in the top 25. Yes. Season, first time since 97, as we talked about. Who's, fin who's finishing the season ranked highest? I'm going to go women's volleyball. I think, they, I think they have the best chance. A lot of what you said, but I... Look, I said the schedule's tough. Well, you said the schedule, but that's because they're, they have opportunities against these really high-ranked teams. Yeah. So I, I think, look, and you know as well as I do that even, let's say, let's say you stumble. The fact that you're playing such a such a tough schedule may not hurt you that much. So That's the I, hope, because last yes. year BYU was ranked as high as fourth, got an 11 seed. Yeah, which they were is, not respected with the RPI. I, I'm gonna go women's volleyball. By the way, I do like I, I said soccer. I feel like is ranked a little high right now for where I think they are. I think volleyball is a little high as well. I think volleyball is probably in that kind of 13 to 16 range. They climb in the top 10, no problem. They'll have chances, but I agree, women's volleyball finishes very high. All right, the Mountain this West. Is, this Hilarious. is this is fantastic. The Mountain West Conference, the conference, tweeted out that they have five teams in the top, not top 25, top 44 Let's go. of the preseason AP top 25 poll. Is this the most Mountain West tweet ever? None were in the top 25, right? Zero? Zero. Okay. Um, I think the real question is, does Craig Thompson use a brush or a comb? That's the real question. I say it's comb, by the so way. We, I think you brush. and I differ. Yeah, I think, I think it's comb. I think brush. Do you use a comb or a brush? Uh, I use uh, my hands, actually. Oh, no brush just, or just, comb. Just OG. Yeah. Cavemen were using just little little H I, little H two O. No pomade. No pomade. Back in the, the back in the cave. <laughs> ben Dap Bywater. Dapper Dan. I use yes, the Dapper Dan. Dan. There yes. You go. Ben Bywater posted a video doing a wheelie on a motorcycle. Incredible stuff. Is he a better linebacker or a motorcyclist? First of all, that is so impressive. I am not a daredevil on any level. I'm so scared to I, death for him. I'm, right yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go <laughs> linebacker because I don't want to think about what could have happened in this. I'm just gonna focus on the football and say linebacker. He's good to go, man. We're uh, this is th these are summer doings. I'm a big fan of Ben Bywater. Oh, I think he's fantastic. Dude's, dude's jacked, he's, dude. He's he's great on the field. Yep. He is a great good interview. Dude. I, I'm a huge hey, fan of Ben Bywater. I'm, I'm a huge fan of him as well. Played rugby in high school. Love those rugby guys. Let's Let's go. See it. That's proper tackling right there. <laughs> this is the voice of the Utah Warriors. Yeah, people, people go, oh, you work with the Warriors? Yeah, they to... <laughs> oh, I thought you meant going. <laughs> just you and Steph hanging hey, out. Hey, you're just getting bucked. You and, you and Draymond hanging out on the weekend. Definitely not. All right, coming up, the top five returning players on the BYU defense. And David Nixon's live in studio. What does he think of BYU ranked 25th? Who are his top couple of players on the – oh, here's David. He's just he's just ready for AFR, but we said, hey, can you just come on BYU Sports Nation? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today.
is BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing. Or, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Check out after further review tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern time on the BYU TV app as the guys discuss Ben Bywater, not on a motorcycle, uh, Isaac Rex, Jacob Conover, Pepe Tanavasa, and others as we get closer to the start of the 2022 BYU football season. Hey, maybe they'll work it in. This is the Ben I'm Bywater show now. We could be this close. Hey. Well, this is how close we used to be on the old desk back in the day. <laughs> it was too close. Uh, luckily, we were spread out a little bit. I want social distancing, distancing even without COVID. Uh, welcome back, Jeremy Jordan, alongside the very near uh, Jason Shepard. Let's bring in David Nixon from the other side of the desk here. David, what's going on, man? How you doing? AFR Tuesday. AFR Tuesday, and we are in our studio where we film AFR. So this feels, I feel very comfortable right now. Do you feel like yeah. we're inner, like, like we're taking over your area does it feel like is this very territorial yeah i feel like you're infringing upon yes. our space yes. now, now you're too close to us well, I mean, you to guys are close together so now you're too close to us i mean this is the countdown to tip off space but yeah <laughs> me and tyler so uh, easy yeah. easy <laughs> basketball for football uh, no okay it's Be always careful. it's always basketball season in lds gyms uh just saying okay byu uh football ranked 25th should byu have been higher uh should they have been probably do i like where they're at Yes. In fact, I love it. Ooh. I love being the underdog. I, I love being able to make your way, make, make some, uh, you know, movement up the rankings, uh, make waves across uh, the college landscape and, and kind of progress versus if you start at 10, how it's, it's that was more difficult to try to make, you know, every week. Climb Did the, the rankings. quest for perfection burn you on this? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe. But no, listen, I, I really do like it. I, I, you rather have a team that's trying to, you know, uh, strive for more versus be complacent and stay at, you know, top 10, top 12. I think the fact that you're just in the rankings in and of itself uh, is, is where you need to be at the beginning of the season. You have the respect. I think that it gives you some validity to everything you've done in the past, to the returners. I mean, it, 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 it kind of, for the players, it provides a little bit of, uh, okay, look, you know, they've given us a ranking of, of what we've done in, in, in our past, and, and it gives you a little bit of something to, to strive for. But – I like it. I like, you know, the people, the guys up north, top 10 ranking, that's tough to live up to, right? There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. 25, it's like, okay, people obviously are doubting us, and now we can go out there and prove them wrong and climb up in those rankings. Third time in the preseason poll since 98. The other two times were on teams, uh, well, you on the 08 team, one of those. 07, you didn't walk in ranked. People felt like you lost too much, but you proved them wrong. 08, you walk in with a ranking, and then you went to the NFL, and then 09, they walk in with a ranking. It's been a minute. Yeah. Like, it's a meaningful thing yeah. for BYU to start ranked, and that's an interesting take. When BYU, we hope, evolves into uh, a team that's competing for Big 12 titles, the standard then changes, does it not? You're not the underdog. You're the, well, you hope to be 16th and climb into the top eight at the end of the year when you're in the Big 12 kind of deal, right? Yeah, I think so. And I, I think as BYU gets in the Big 12 and you get into a P5, you start to get more credibility as well, right? And I think people realize the schedules you're, play, you're playing week in and week out, you don't have any cupcakes really throughout the schedule like BYU. Kansas! <laughs> <Kids. this year. laughs> yeah. Hey, Texas. Te like Texas the word. Texas is like the word right now. Well, beating Texas isn't that hard. Yeah, it's, it's kind of true. We've, We've seen BYU that. knows We've that. We've seen it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But, no, I think being in a conference will obviously help. I think it boosts that, frankly. I bet you if this BYU team was in the Big 12 this year, I bet you they start 20, maybe 19. A little P5 bump. That's a little P5 I bump. I, I think I it agree. may take a sec because I think people will be like, oh, yeah, BYU's in the Big 12 now. But, yeah, I, I see that yeah. changing too. So, BYU, obviously at 25, but four of the Cougars' opponents were also ranked in the top 25, and we had a, a nice little discussion in, uh, in the first segment of the program. Uh, what do you think BYU's record is against those four teams that are, are preseason top 25? I think if BYU wants to live up to the seasons they've had in the past and what they're trying to build in the program, you've got to go minimum two and two. You've got to split them. Amen. Yep. Um, I think three and one's a success. Four and oh is uh, everyone's minds are blown, right? I mean, we're, we're uh, <laughs> blue goggles all yes. day, every day, 24-7. Yes. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think minimum you've got, you've got to split them. And you've got a couple in the home, a couple away. And so 
Uh, one of them being on a neutral field uh, down in Vegas. But uh, I I, it was Notre Dame Stadium, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're seeing that come to fruition here. Wait but, a minute. Uh, no, I think with, with Baylor at home and, and Arkansas at home, hopefully you – I mean – Baylor returns obviously a lot of stars as well. The quarterback's gone, but they had their backup who came in and played. Um, Arkansas, Smash Mouth, SEC, you know, and then you've got Oregon. I like the Oregon game, frankly. I mean, I think BYU matches up well with Oregon, yeah. uh, de- especially defensively. And then Notre Dame. They're only a six and a half point favorite at home. Yeah. yeah. They being Oregon. Oregon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And, and then Notre Dame, I'll tell you what, Notre Dame with the schedule they have, I heard there was news that they had a couple guys fall to injuries, which yeah. happens every year in fall they camp. They have six scholarship receivers right now. Yeah, and then you start off with Ohio State, Tough. which you're going to get banged up in that game. It's always yeah. so interesting, right? I saw a tweet from uh, Brett McMurphy that mentioned that – left BYU out of the AP poll. Yeah, that, that's, we don't give him too much credit there. at this point. Um, <laughs> tweet at him if you want. But I, 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 I saw an interesting tweet where he said in the last 20 years, excluding 2019, there's been at least one top 10 team that has finished the season unranked. Yeah. And so these polls are they're, they're fun. And, and I yeah. think for BYU, going back to the conversation earlier, it sets you up to climb in the rankings, right? You don't want to be 44th uh, and have to climb from there. Like the Mountain West. <laughs> like the Mountain West. Uh, it's Mountain nice West, to, West player David Nixon. It, it's <laughs> nice to start in the top 25 <laughs> and climb. It makes it that much easier, obviously. Um, but at the same time, I mean, th- there's so much movement in these polls. And, and for me, that's going to be what's interesting is as BYU fans, we should be watching week in and week out you know, as we've done independence all this whole time, but specifically this year because of the four ranked teams, what they're doing. And, yeah. and when BYU meets them, what are, what's our schedule? What's their schedule? You and this is a top 10 to beat Ohio State. Yeah. You want 100%. Oregon to beat Georgia. Like, 100%. pull off those upsets. Look, and BYU can't control where these teams ultimately end up because you can only you play them as they are when you play them and you try and beat them and then you move on. Jeremy and I agree on which team this is. If there's one team that you think of the, of the four teams – that when the season is over, that's currently right now, that won't be at the end of the season, which, which would you pick? I know our friends up north are going to hate me for saying this, but probably Oregon because the Pac-12 okay. is just a dumpster Because we, we both thought Arkansas. Those are yeah. two easy wins. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think, I think Oregon, I think the Pac-12 is just a mess. And, and I think Oregon will, you know, Oregon will get their eight, nine wins, you know, ten. I don't see Arkansas in the SEC Getting a double digit, double digit win season. No way. Just, there's the no schedule's way. too yeah. hard, David. It's too hard. That's what I'm saying. So when you if look they at, win nine, that's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why I think you look at those teams and what conferences they're in, um, and maybe Notre Dame's. You know, uh, with the new coach this year, and maybe they surprise some people. But uh, I would say probably Oregon, just because of the conference they're in. Baylor feels a little volatile, although they're building because they lost the quarterback Jerry Bohannon. Although they started, you know, right. shaping at the end of the year. Abram Smith, 1600 yards, like Tyler Rodgers. He's gone, right? Uh, top two receivers, Taquan Thornton's in the NFL. That's two safeties. That one feels interesting, too. And like we were talking about, that's the most winnable game among those four because it's the first home game. And BYU's not coming in beat up against South Florida, hopefully. They're ready to rock at home. And uh, Dave McCann's Jets are flying over, and we're ready to rock, right? <laughs> and, and, and I will throw this in as a revenge game. I mean, and not, Heck yeah. and, and not only is it a revenge game, if you have to look back at that game, you go back and watch that film, BYU got dominated. I mean, nine yards allowed the, rushing? The, the score itself didn't look like BYU got smashed as bad, but defensively, BYU got run all over the field. And, and I think if you're a defensive player, yeah. I think that's the game you circle on your counter. Yeah, of course, USF because it's the first game. But that's the game, I think the most important game on my schedule is saying we've got to come back and, and prove our worth <laughs> because we got, we got embarrassed. Uh, and that's a game that we got to come back and say, okay, that was – that was not the BYU defense. That was just kind of a, uh, an exception. And, and we've got to come out and, and, and prove ourselves. And so uh, that's – I agree. I think that game, the first one, hopefully not nicked up. Um, I mean, we go back and talk about this all the time where BYU, you look at their, their season last year, before they had nicked up, that run defense was phenomenal, right? And then all of a sudden guys started dropping like flies and, and you saw what happened later in the season. So uh, I like that game a lot. That's going to be I, – I, I've, t- I've said this as well on AFR that I think that game, the whole season hinges on that game. On Baylor? Yeah, on Baylor. Wow. I, I, think, I think you'll see either whether it's a 7-5, 8-4 type season or a 10-2 uh, you know, type season depending on that game. I think that will sway the t- this team one way or another. It is interesting because if you, if you win that game, obviously you're headed in the right direction. If you lose that, it's like, well – do you win at Oregon? Do you beat Arkansas at home right after Notre Dame? Like, do you take care of business against Utah State, who, oh, by the way, won 11 games last year, won the Mountain West? Yeah. But we're not talking about at all, right? 
Yeah, I, I think the reason we're not talking about it is because BYU's rest of the schedule is so loaded, right? I mean, there's only five P5s this year compared to seven last year. But we, We're not even talking about Stanford. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about Boise State. I did, but the, right? the schedule is so yeah. loaded. I mean, yeah. when you talk about five P5s, four of ranked, I mean, I, you guys have probably discussed this. Right. I, I think it's probably their best, ske- hardest schedule ever. Walking in, well, walking into a season, probably. Yeah. 91 was insane for Ty right after the Heisman. BYU goes one and three because they're playing UCLA, Florida State, Penn State, Air Force. Yeah. Like, and BYU goes one and three in those games. But then they go on a tear the rest of the year. They're like eight zero oh, and two or something. But um, yeah, okay. Well, let's finish with it. Oh, well, no, no, you had a question. no. Oh. Well, I was just gonna say we, we've obviously talked a lot about the polls and and the schedule and whatnot. But let's let's get your take on the defense really fast. Um, we're gonna actually in our top five Tuesday we're gonna talk about the best returning defenders. Okay. Um, Use whatever criteria you want. What's who's in your opinion BYU's best defender? Listen, I'm I'm a linebacker, so I have to stick with my guys, right? Those are those are my people, the linebackers. So I'm going with Peyton Wilgar, and, and I love Peyton because you can move him all around the field, mm. right? This is a guy who uh, he can play in the middle. He's big enough and beefy enough to play in the middle. You can put him on a rush in uh, when you go dive or nickel and, and have him rush out the end. But he also covers fantastic in space, and so I, I think this is a guy who's very long, very rangy. Um, great speed. I, I, I love Peyton Wilgar. I love also how humble he is. This is a guy. Yeah. When's the last great time story. we heard an interview there, or even when he celebrates, he's not, it's not about him. It's always about the team. And, and we did, you know, there was a deep blue on him last year that talked about him bringing in some of his uh, nieces and nephews. If, if people have not right seen now, that, like, oh highly gosh. recommend uh, that. Unbelievable. I mean, Huge so, so I just rely around him as a player, as a, as a guy, as a, as a man, as a human. <laughs> Um, but I think on the field, his production level and, and what he brings as a leadership uh, perspective too is huge to this team. And and I, I love Peyton Wilgar. I think I think he's kind of one of those foundational pieces, as well as Peely. I mean, I think any of those guys, linebackers, typically linebackers are your captains, right? Um, and, and because they are right there in the middle of the field, they've got to make checks and calls and and, and kind of get guys in the right spots. But um, I, I think this linebacker core, if they if they can stay healthy, right? This is always the if, the yeah. big if. Um, man, it's going to be a special season if they can stay healthy. But even if they don't, BYU's had some great backups that have come in and provide great depth, you know, throughout the last few years. So, yeah. I'm optimistic. UAB runs for 243 because there's no Peely and Wilgar there. Like, I mean, there's, that's part of it. That's yeah. a big story. Well, there, there's yeah. nobody yeah. there, right? It's there's it's a, tough. I mean, what Aaron Roderick mentioned that uh, he looked out there and didn't recognize, like, half the guys starting in that game on the defense. Like, yeah. Who's number what? <laughs> yeah. Who is that? Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay, we'll see you at 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app on uh, AFR. Thanks. Yeah, we're excited for no show. Let's go. Thanks, David. All right, coming up, today's Rise and Shoutout. And who are the top five defensive players on the team? How many linebackers are in it for David Nixon? We'll tell you in Top 5 Tuesday coming up. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 
portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. It's the Top 5 Tuesday, the Top 5 Returning Defensive Players. Let's get after it. We start with, surprise, surprise, number 5. Coming in at number 5, Tyler Batty. At 6'5", 275 pounds, Tyler's led the team in sacks in each of his two seasons here with the Cougs. Last year alone, he had 43 tackles, five of those for loss and three and a half sacks, including a career-high eight-tackle game in the bowl game. Yeah, that we don't want to talk about. We don't talk about it. Number four, Malik Moore. Malik, one of only six players to start every single game last year, 32 tackles, three PBUs, team-high three interceptions, including this one at Washington State. All of his interceptions came against state schools, Arizona State, Utah State, Washington State. Hmm. We'll look for that this year. Interesting. Boise State. At number three, Caleb Hayes. The Underrated, dude. The Oregon State transfer had 11 pass breakups last year, seven more than the next highest Cougar. He was one of the best corners in the country in defending the deep ball, allowing only one reception on 18 passes of 20 yards or more, which was good for third best in the FBS last year. Underrated, I'm telling you, he's really good, man. Number two, Peyton Wilgard, despite missing two and a half games, third on the team in tackles, two picks, one and a half sacks, forced fumble. Pro Football Network's independent linebacker of He's also a new dad, so he's got that new dad strength chip. And at number one, how about a return for Keenan Peely. Keenan also suffered a season-ending injury last year, only playing in two and a half games. However, in the minutes that he did get, he tallied 31 tackles, one and a half sacks, leading the Cougars in tackles in the Arizona and Utah games, as we know, both wins. <laughs> he has uh, also been named to the 2022 Chuck Bednarik Award watch list, which is awarded to the best defensive player in college football. Dude, he a baller. Like, oh, having Keenan Peely back is a fantastic piece of news for BYU. Our question of the day, what would BYU's record be against the four preseason ranked teams, Notre Dame, Baylor, Oregon, Arkansas? Our lead voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at WD Heath 40. 4 0. I borrowed a DeLorean and checked for myself. Nice. Let's call him, got Doc Brown here. Call him Biff. Very nice. Today's Rise and Shout Outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. You're speaking my language. You know, Back to the Future is my favorite movie of all time. So good, How about another power couple making it official? Engagement Nate Daly of the baseball team, Kenzie Kerber, formerly of women's volleyball. Look at that. You get the pitcher. Uh, Dally in the Tampa Wait, the Bay Rays. The picture or the picture? The picture. Because it both worked. Yes. Nice. Congratulations to Kenzie and Nate on the engagement. So exciting. Well, thanks to today's guest, Puka Nakua and David. Conversation continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Michael Reed. We'll see you at 2 30 Eastern on social media for BYU Sports Nation. Post practice interviews. Go Cougs.